One of the most important roles of the news media is to make sure the American public never sees the effects of war. So we see the tanks from which the shells are fired. We see the soldiers firing those shells. We don't see the people killed and maimed by those shells. The American public has received a very one-sided view of war. I, for one, don't think that we should censor photographs of people who are wounded or dead. I think we should see them in living color every single night. You know, now they hide behind. Well, that's you know that would be insensitive and all that stuff. Some of it, after careful thought and trying to be responsible as well as sensitive, we have electronically blurred. Well, of course it'd be insensitive. And people, people need to be sensitized to what's really going on. In addition to the thousands of Iraqi civilians who've been killed during the war and occupation, more than 600 American service members have fallen, with thousands more wounded and permanently maimed. Each one of these casualties represents a family shattered by the war. If you travel to where the people are really living and where soldiers are really coming from, just the you know, poor communities all around this country, people know what's up with the war and people don't like it and they're not, they don't support it. Jesus Suarez del Solar was one of the first American victims of the war in Iraq. He left behind a wife, a young son, and a father, Fernando Suarez del Solar, forced to come to terms with their loss. This war destroyed a lot of families. These families destroy you. And my grandson lost the father. I lost the opportunity to good relation with the father and the mother. And when Jesus leaving in February 5, he told me, Father, I come back, no worry about it. But something happened. Take care of my son, wife my son, and make the same education you give me me. And I say, no worry about it, you come back. I never come back. Stan Goff is a retired Army Special Forces Master Sergeant. His son is currently serving in Iraq. In November of 2003, Goff wrote an open letter to American troops in Iraq. He drew connections between his own combat experience in the Vietnam War and what he now sees American troops experiencing in Iraq. Two of the hardest days I had this year, um, one was when I said goodbye to my son. Um, and one was the day after the truck bomb went off on the 11th of December in Ramadi, where he is. Um, because it took two days before we heard anything from him and we were on pins and needles. I have additional fears. I have the fear that he's going to come back uh, as crazy as I was when I came back from Vietnam. And, you know, we all, a lot of us went crazy in different ways, you know. I don't know how many helicopter pilots I talked to that came back from Vietnam that said, I just loved greasing them. It was, the, it was the biggest thrill of their life. It was just to find somebody where there were no witnesses and hose them down. And way more common than most people realize. People at Milai got caught. That stuff was going on every single day somewhere. An atrocity generating situation. That's what we have in Iraq right now. The uh, attacks, the t attacks on our troops, uh, they are, are clearly inspiring a kind of trigger happiness and a readiness for revenge in our troops that I think will result in the same kind of things we saw from in Milai. I wrote the piece, uh, said, hold on to your humanity, uh, specifically to describe how that process happens to some people, why it happens, um, how at the very bottom of it is the ability to redefine people whose, whose nation you occupy are somehow less than human. In November of 2003, a U.S. delegation of military families and veterans visited Iraq. Medea Benjamin of Global Exchange helped organize the trip and accompanied the group. The son of one of the members of our delegation said to him, his father, Dad, they hate us here. They saw us first as liberators, and now they see us as occupiers, and they hate us. They want us to go home. We want to go home. One woman 
who saw her daughter for the first time in three years because her daughter had been stationed in Germany. And this mother broke down and cried seeing her daughter. And she said, if I had the money to put my daughter in college, she would be holding a book instead of a gun. She shouldn't be holding a gun. None of these kids should be holding guns.